What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex. In this video, I want to talk about Sony's move to live service, some of the new stuff that's just come out over the last couple of days, and why I continue to just get more worried about it. I've been seeing people saying they wanted more kind of opinion pieces from me, some longer videos, and guess what? That's what you're going to get right now, so buckle in. Obviously, I do kind of want to walk through this stuff. So this is not I guess by surprise, what's going on? We've been kind of picking it up one piece at a time over the last couple months, over the last maybe even year or so. There's a very clear desire for Sony to go into live service. Okay, again, it's not the first time we've heard it. We've heard things like 10 live service games by 2026. You've probably maybe seen the charts of, okay, well, here's how much money they're putting towards live service games. Here's how much money they're putting towards everything else. And as the years go on, and th these are things they like show to investors. These are things they do during like, like shows and they pr like present to other people kind of in their in their group in their class right this is like actual things i think some playstation gamers and not necessarily my community but some of like the bigger ones they need to stop with the idea that like oh well Maybe it's all just kind of talk or like, well, I'll have to see these live service games before I believe like that's their plan. They're showing you the future, right? Like that's, and, and for me too, I would say maybe like a year or so ago when you first start to hear this stuff, it's like, well, I don't know. I don't know if this is really their plan, but again, like, you see their spending. You see what their plan is to spend money in certain places. You see, say, the last PlayStation Showcase, which, yes, I guess we have to go back there for you know the purposes of this video, so many of those games, live service. You think of the big, maybe some of the bigger ones, like the marathons of the world from Bungie's, right? Live service kind of thing. We're still waiting on Twisted Metal. You're still waiting on The Last of Us. And now the number, the reported number, is even higher. They expect somewhere in the range of 12 live service games like big live service games from playstation to be out by the end of 2026 so like again i get it hasn't happened yet and like that is even what's being written where it's like you know sony's putting all this money billions of that with a b billions of dollars into this stuff and if you think about it they've never actually done it they've kind of like watched other things pop off they've maybe had like a part like fall guys i think that was like a playstation plus thing so you know they've been in like the ecosystem of it but they've never like driven it themselves and not only are they going all in but they're going all in on something that they maybe don't fully understand that's always been my thing now i have seen our Argument. I think Colin Moriarty even made an argument that I, I kind of like the argument, to be honest with you, uh, just a day ago or whatever, where he said, well, look, if everything goes perfectly, and I think that to me would be probably the issue with this, if you do it perfectly, you can have everything. You can have your live service games, and maybe some of them are the Fortnites of the world, the, the Dead by Daylights of the world, right? We'll get there in a second, by the way, of how I feel about live service. You can maybe get some of those. You'll have those third-party deals, right? You'll have the Final Fantasies of the world, basically Square Enix partnerships, right? You'll have all that. And you will still have your single player, the maybe Horizons, The Last of Us. You got Naughty Dog, Insomniac, Sucker Punch, Blue Point. The list goes on, right? So if you do it perfectly, you've really almost kind of captured everything. Now, you know, I say in theory, and I agree with Colin, I, I respect the man quite a bit. I think that does make sense. The issue is, will that actually work? Well, I don't want to, you know, bore you all too much because we have talked about my opinion specifically on live service games in the past. It's a dangerous strategy that I just flat out don't agree with. I don't like the idea that you know, again, when you think of some of the bigger live service games out there in the world, you think of like a top 10 list. You think of games that maybe have, say, 10,000 or more players. Well, for every game that's on that top 10 list, there's probably 100 games that failed, right? Because you only have so many people on planet Earth. They only, and more than that, actually, it's way more than that. They only have so much time. So when you have a game that demands them, anybody, to go back and play it every day, you can only do that to so many people, and there's only so much time in the day for them to go and say, well, I got to knock out my Fortnite grind for the night, then I'm going to wake up and I'm going to do some Dead by Daylight, then play four uh, matches of Rocket League, then I'm going to do the last was multiplayer, then I'm going to do Twisted Metal, like, that's all they'd be doing, right? It's hard, and that's why that's where I've, guess I've always kind of stood. Now, yes, maybe you don't need 10,000 plus people to consider yourself like a successful thing here's what i would say though when you're thinking about sony when you're thinking about these big splashes when you're thinking okay the newest report right is two plus billion dollars over i believe until march of 2026 or just 2026 you think about how much money they're putting into their just investments of, of pouring it into gaming okay 
gaming stuff is over $2 billion, and 60% of that money is going towards live service. So you think over a billion, way over a billion, is going just to live service. So these are probably not games. I know, long story, got to make everything bigger than it really is, right? But you're probably looking at games that have big budgets. You're probably looking at games like The Last of Us, and The Last of Us multiplayer. I would be shocked if you told me that that thing costs 20 million or less dollars, right, to develop because it just it doesn't happen anymore. So most likely, let's say these things on average cost 50 to 100 million dollars to develop each live service game. Well, you are not an indie studio where your live service game costs 5 million and you can survive off of 5,000 players a day, 4,000 players. It's not that, right? You're making these games to attract tens of thousands of people. You'd, you'd Well, I guess not assume, you'd hope, you'd want that ideally to, to have that many people playing it every single day. And you want to have, say, 12 of them in the next three years. Three years from now, you're going to have 12 of those. Now, I will say one news story I think we talked about or maybe I tweeted about is there was, whether it was a report or maybe Jim Ryan said it or something, each of those live service games is kind of in a different genre. And I would say, even in terms of kind of what we know, like you think of the marathons or even like the destinies, right? So you got your first person shooters. You got Twisted Metal, let's say. So that's like a car, right, kind of thing. You got Last of Us. So third person, maybe it's a little Battle Royale. Maybe it's a little Infected versus Human, you know, whatever it could be. You start to think of, okay, well, what are some live service things they can do? Is the Horizon multiplayer game live service? Okay, that's kind of like a Monster Hunter thing, but maybe free to play like you can start to say okay they are going to be different i've never doubted that i do think each one is going to be different hopefully the production and the feel to these games is quite like it feels triple a if you know it feels powerful but i just get very very worried about that stuff and then even you have like the other side of things you know the last of us uh part one i guess getting remade i know that's an old story i know we've already been kind of down that path but i think it's getting old i think people are kind of getting annoyed with it I, I even notice when i look at the uh the story i just did the the video i just did a few hours ago on the last of Us part two remaster like when you think of the strategy or you think of the the rumors rumors that horizon the first horizon game zero dawn which was what 2017 that that's going to get some sort of remaster remake so on one side of things you have sony just going in live service which i think the odds of at least all of them being successful i think is zero percent but even just a few of them it's still not that high so you have that huge push that 60 percent of their strategy going forward is that then the other 40 percent okay well i ghost of tsushima is incredible give me the second one give me more ghost of tsushima uh, legends right but like do we have to pepper in the last of us part two every four years is that like their elder scrolls you know their, their skyrim uh you know what do we have to do with horizon do you know we just talked about the horizon story that they have 16 ideas in guerrilla games now i talked about that in the last video i won't bore you too much but but the idea with that one is, okay, well, even if all of those 16 games don't happen, which they shouldn't, well, that's still a little bit of an issue, at least to me, because you think, okay, say five of them happen, say three of them happen, that's 10 years. The next 10 years of Gorilla is just one thing. So I guess what I'm saying, well, what are, what's the opposite, I guess? What would I kind of want? Experimentation. That, that's now I guess live service you could say well that is experimenting you would be right I would have to agree with you on that one but you know I think to the PS3 era which I know PS2 is kind of like the era it's the thing that got you know everybody onto it PS3 is the one that I not necessarily like grew up like I think it was like 10 11 12 going into the PS3 or when I got my PS3 it really is where I became a gamer is the PS3 is some of the, I guess, remastered collections. So you did have some of that, but you know, some of like the motor storms or you had things like heavy rain. Now that was Quantic dream, right? But obviously that's where uncharted was created. And just all of these different things, PlayStation all Stars, battle Royale, you could take risks and, you go back to Sean Layton's thing of all these games cost, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars. There's really no room to take risks anymore. So I do get worried. I mean, I mean, that's why I wanted to make this video. I know maybe we kind of went off track, but I'm not thrilled flat out. I'm not thrilled with the future of PlayStation. Um, the future of PlayStation obviously has been very, they don't want the Activision Blizzard thing to go on. That's kind of like in the now, right? That's what we're focusing on now. You know, you think to the future and all right, so for every three live service games, will you get one 
triple a what you kind of, what you have i guess come to expect from playstation is that going to be the new ratio well technically technically it'd be 60 40 so technically it would be for every like one and one fifth live service game you would get one you know not that but again is one of those horizon zero dawn remastered is that gonna like thrill people no, I, I don't think so, to be honest with you. I think you should probably remake or remaster. Go back and do... If you want to do that, right? I'm all for new ideas, and I think we do need some new things. But why don't you go back, if you want to do that, go to Jack and Daxter. Go to the Sly Coopers of the world. Like, go to that era. Take a couple eras off, you know, not in the last 10, 15 years. Go back, like, 15-plus years and just do those instead. And, you know, that's a biasness, I'm sure. That's fine. But I just think... A game that's six years old, does that need to be remastered over a game that's 15 years? Uh, Sly 2, I think, was 2004, so that's 19 years old. Like, can we get that first? And so, so that's what's going on, and I'm, I'm not thrilled with it. Now, at the same time, I want to throw this out here so nobody can call me a hypocrite. I'll just call myself one. Will I end up playing these games? Of course. Well, I'm like I said, I'm a gamer at heart. I'm somebody who covers these things. I'm never really going to stop doing that. So will I play the Twisted Metal one or Marathon? Well, Marathon, probably very, very little. But yeah, I'll probably check out most of the live service games that they make. I will say, and I've said this before, like phone stuff, if they go too heavy into like the mobile kind of thing, no, absolutely. Like I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Maybe I'll do it for like a day, but you're not going to get me with those things. That's just not, I guess, the gamer that I am. Uh, but maybe it gets some other people and again like Colin has said and like I'm sure a lot of people that would defend PlayStation which is fine you can do that I think a lot of them would say well again you know if done right you can get you can get everything you can, you can have your and I'll even extend it you can do your remasters you can do your remakes right so you can get those things that maybe some people deem necessary some people don't deem you can have that you can have your live service and you can have brand new games you can have partnerships you can kind of have things outside of your wheelhouse you can have all of them that is true if everything works if everything works if you're just going to remaster games in the last 10 years I'm going to tell you right now that's going to just make people more and more mad as time goes on if you're going to have just live service after live service and if you start to see them fail that's gonna make people upset and then if you get one big game one spider-man every year or two and i guess that's okay but then when you're gonna have your competition xbox right so you had god of war ragnarok last year spider-man this year okay so every year you get like say one gigantic it, it takes the gaming industry by storm right that's good and i would say to a, an extent that's acceptable but well, what happens when xbox starts doing their starfield hellblades avouds what happens when they start doing three of them four of them indiana jones in one year so now Sony's got one. Oh, but they got two live service games, but they only have one, you know, and then Xbox over here has three or four. I'm not competing, like putting, like, you know, pitting them off against each other. The great thing with not being a console warrior is I don't care. And if Xbox has like the better year, guess what? I'm just going to play those games on Xbox. I don't have an allegiance to these. I just want good games. I want good games to cover. I want games that I'm interested in to cover. And I'm going to play the games that I want to play. And lucky for me, I guess, I don't care about the company, so I can play them wherever I want, unlike people that limit themselves. So let me know what you think. Uh, hopefully you guys like the longer video. Look, if you like this stuff, leave a like, leave a comment. Helps the video out. Definitely want to do some more longer videos. You know, we got a little bit of a dead period of time still to come before games come out. Can totally do more of these. Thank you for watching. Check out all the links in the description for everything else that I do. And I hope to see you all on the next one.